I'm praying for the continued support from the Hunab Kuu and the Zorkin. I am here to do your work. Greetings! In Lakesh Alakin, I am another you. You are another me. We are one. One Godsciousness. Alright. I am Crispy. And therefore, so are you. Ha <laughs> ha. And I am a Gaian Pleiadian Mayan emissary of light. I'm here to bring you the truth from the great central sun, which is also the great central black hole in the epicenter of the omniverse, which the Maya call the Hunab Kuu. It is equal portions of divine feminine and divine masculine. By the way, so are you. Ha <laughs> ha! Because we were created in Godsciousness's imagination. Godsciousness is my word for the Hunab Kuu, by the way. But that's not really what I'm here to talk to you about today. What I am here to really talk to you about today is one of the most incredible, the most scintillating synchronicities of Mayan astrology that I have ever experienced. I'm talking about what you already know from the thumbnail of this video. Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, Esther Hicks, and Tony Shearer all have the exact same Mayan birthday. They were all spread out over many years, but every 260 days that same birthday comes up again, and they were on one of those synchronistic days. The glyph is uh, of the two rods coming up, and these these beams of light are coming up from the center of the earth, which I call Sophia Gaia. And that line in the middle there is actually where we all walk. That's the line of the earth. And then two pillars of light are coming down from the heavens, which uh, you already know what I call. And actually, um, people who were born on that day of Ben in the Yucatecan pronunciation, and Ash in the Guatemalan. There's probably many other pronunciations that I don't know about. They stand on that line and they go boo boo, connecting the pillars of light from the heavens to the earth. That's just what they do. And tone 10 is five, one, two, three, four, five, and another five, also seen vertically and horizontally. It's two hands. Five, five, two hands. It's for making, doing, collaborating. It's for manifesting, which is why they are called manifesting. And then they modify that glyph, whichever glyph they are born under. So these four amazing souls are called manifesting corn, or manifesting cane, or reed, or manifesting um, bamboo, I like to call it, and manifesting pillars of light. So, as you also noticed from the um, thumbnail, thumbnail, weird, eh? Uh, thumbnail. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> uh, the three phrases that I came up with, which includes a word or phrase from the glyph key code words, and a word or phrase from the tone key code words, and I put them together in high vibration phrases. <laughs> um, so the three that I concocted for them is co-creating pillars of light, setting supportive intentions, and abundant compassion. 
Now, that's just three of the possible over 100, because if you have, um, let's say, well, it's about 100. If, if you have nine key code words and nine key code words, then that makes at least 81 possible combinations, and then there's grammatic play and uh, a few others, so it's over 100 possible combinations of high vibration phrases just for their core self. <laughs> we haven't even talked about their four guides yet, but I promise you I will. <laughs> so here's a couple more keyword phrases, uh, high vibration phrases you could call them, for their core self as a sustaining partnerships. Courageous family. Collaborative courage. So take the family and courage and courageous family, collaborative courage. Interesting. Uh, ben, corn, cane, reed, bamboo. It's very much about the family. Um, and the home, actually. All of those things, corn, cane, reed, bamboo, super crucial for the home, either making it or sustaining the food energy of the humans that live in that home. One more. Solid spine. Tone 10, solid. Then spine. Solid spine. I love that. Yet flexible. <laughs> Can you be solid and flexible at the same time? I don't know, can you? <laughs> All right, sorry. Not sorry. Okay, now, um, that's the core self. And in Mayan embodiment astrology, which um, happened to me, I didn't really make it up. Um, one day I was meditating and zap! Binga! This thing beamed into me, um, and it's taken me quite a few years to unpack what it all means. And in order to do that, I had to research every existing Mayan system. And, you know, they, they go from way north of Mexico City to down in Costa Rica. And... I amalgamated and synthesized, and that's where I came up with these terms, and that's why they're a little bit different from some of the other terms you see, because almost all the other existing Mayan astrology books, websites, etc., are focused, localized in one place. Mine is focused and localized all over the place. <laughs> right, so, here's what happens. You! This is your birthday on uh, your glyph and your tone, and to... Okay, so if you're born on tone 10, that's right down here, you have four guides. Everyone has four guides. That's that's what this is. This is everyone right here, and these are spinning. They, they constantly rotate. Everyone has four guides. Did I say that? Here's how you find out. If you're born on 10, you go back six spaces to get to your divine masculine guide. So, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Now we know the divine masculine guide is tone four. See my fingertips? That's the four dots. You want to find your past wisdom guide? You go two more. Three, two. Now, you're back on 10 again. You're going to go 6 into the future. 11, 12, 13, 1, 2, 3. Your Divine Feminine Guide is Tone 3. And you want to do a little bit more future projecting into your future vision guide? You go two more. 3, 4, 5. If you're born on Tone 10, if you are... A manifesting human. <laughs> That's the pattern. The easy way to do it is this, okay? So 10, 11, 12, 13, 1, 2. Start at 2. If you just go 10, 
Whatever tone you're born on, you count five. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. One. Two. That is your, is your past wisdom guide. So two, three, four, five. That's how it works. It's so simple. You can't do it any easier than this. This is so simple. It's in your body, actually. And, and you are inside the Mayan calendar. And the Mayan calendar is inside you. Because, as you can see here, the Mayan calendar is DNA. So, yeah. It's inside every cell of your body, and now, with Mayan embodiment, you are inside the Mayan Zolkin. Woohoo! It's so fun in here. I love it! Okay, so, same pattern. Now we'll do the glyphs. We already know. Two, three, four, five. How do you do the glyphs? Same thing. You really should know the order, okay? Um... Here they are. All right. One, two, twenty. Okay. Learn the order. So, uh, Ben is the thirteenth glyph. Corn, cane, reed, bamboo. Uh, pillars of light is the thirteenth glyph. So you go back. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven. So seven is your divine masculine guide. Did you notice how you go back? to the masculine, and you go forward into the future. The future is feminine. You go six steps forward into the future to find your divine feminine guide. Let's do that again. You're on 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Six steps from 13 is 19, and the 19th glyph is rainstorm. Wow. Now, Rainstorm is, without a doubt, the number one associated glyph with Divine Feminine. So everyone who is born on corn has a rainstorm as their Divine Feminine guide. They have the most Divine Feminine of all the glyphs as their Divine Feminine guide. That just gave me those goosebumps. Oh my goodness, that is energy for these people. Do you remember the tone? Two, three. Three. Three is all about three hearthstones in the kitchen. I'm not joking here. Three is the number of providing nourishment, cooking, communication, busyness. Busy, busy, busy. That's one of their three-word phrases. Busy, busy, busy for all tone three people. So, where was I? Let's go back. Um, four being the deer, okay? Now we go back to four, three, two. Tone two, fifth glyph, serpent. Tone two of the serpent is their past wisdom guide. And tone four is stabilizing deer. Doodle -doodle 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 -doodle, core self. Tone 10 of corn. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. No, it's like, whoa, yeah, corn. Yeah, woo. And then we're going up to the Divine Feminine again. Do you remember? Tone 3 of the rainstorm. And then 4. And then 5. Tone 5 is the hand. And 19, 21. The sunrise. Empowering sunrise is the future vision guide of everyone born on manifesting corn days. <laughs> so, I hope you understand. And what I'm going to do for you now is give you all of the high vibration phrases for each of those four guide positions to help you understand what kind of energy these four incredible human beings have. <laughs> and everyone else who's born on that day too. All right. So, for 
everyone who, all right, you know what? What it really means is I'll do it in order. Two, three, four, five. Everyone who is born on a pairing serpent. Here's three possible high vibration phrases for you. Transcending duality through sensuality. Complementary adaptability. Isn't that cool? Wow, that's so cool. Love it. And also, complementary adaptability also means interdependent adaptability. Okay, I wanted to include those together. They're basically the same energy. Here's the last one for all people born on. Tone two of the serpent. Kundalini relationships. Oh my god, it just happened again. Ooh, standy uppies. I don't have much hair, so you can't see it, but it was just... All right, so now we'll move from pairing serpent as our thoughts of the past, down into the heart chakra, sliding over into the left hand, which is actually the right mind. Yes, the right hand is the left brain. See the difference? Yes, I know you do. So, tone three, activating. Rainstorm. Here are three high vibration phrases for everyone born on Activating rainstorm days, as well as every activating rainstorm day. Oops, just a moment. I need to keep the fire burning, baby. Here we go. Every time I do a reading for someone, and every time I make a video because I consider them both to be sacred. I light a candle. I burn some sage. I even have some copal here from Palenque. That's as close as I get to drugs in Japan. Oh, all right. Where was I? <laughs> okay, here are the three high vibration phrases for the Divine Feminine Guide of these four incredible people. Energizing purification. This is their most personal inner private self which, by the way, can be externalized in everyone who is actually balanced in their Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. They bring those qualities into their heart and they share them with everyone. Here's two more. Divine Feminine Communication. Right. And here's one of my favorites. Divinity Trinity in the eye of the storm. Now, I have to tell you something, my friends. Like I said, Mayan embodiment happened to me in a meditation. But then I realized, okay, I can't just leave it there. I have to share it. And that's when I did all the research. Not only did I research Mayan information, I researched everything I could possibly find in the New Age spirituality, not even New Age, I'm going back to Tibetan Buddhism, um, everything I could find. And one day, the phrase Divinity Trinity popped into my mind and it also took some unpacking to do and it, that one phrase, the Divinity Trinity, is virtually the 
only thing in the whole Mayan embodiment uh, system that is my own actual word, and it somehow seems to go perfectly with everyone who is born on a tone three day. The divinity trinity is three kind of sort of secrets. At least they have been withheld from people in the Western uh, Western mindset, not Western astrology, but Western culture. Specifically, if you have been raised in one of the Abraham Abrahamic religions. The divinity trinity is these three things. Number one, you are a holy hologram, a divine spark, a sacred fractal of godsciousness. There's that word again. I don't use the G-O-D word. It's too limited and too small and too filled with negativity from something I just mentioned 30 seconds ago. You are godsciousness. Number two, every single human being is godsciousness. Number three, you can never die. Oh, yeah. Eternal. We are having a very temporary experience here. <laughs> but when we, our consciousness, our soul leaves this body, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. And you're still you. The Divinity Trinity. I wrote a little song about it. Like to hear it? Here it goes. Just follow that link. Where was I? All right, so Divine Feminine, we move directly across the heart chakra to the Divine Masculine. I need to move over so, yeah, see, see? So simple. Two, three, four. Tone four, my friends, is super stable. That's why it's called stabilizing. And remember what I said it was, the glyph? The deer. And now, because we are in the Divine Masculine with the deer, we're talking about that massive buck with all of those points on his antlers. You can say reindeer if you want. There's none of those in Mexico, but there are big deers there. And they are known as the protectors of the forest and the plains. The deer was the first animal mentioned in the Popol Vuh, the Mayan creation myth. So it's special, okay? Tone four is all about the four directions, the four seasons, the four pillars that hold up the sky, the four colors of the Mayan calendar. Not paying attention to this rainbow freak in the middle. Four colors, four directions. It's so stable. So their outer persona is that. Now here are three high vibration phrases for everyone who was born on stabilizing deer. Foundational hand of protection. Did you notice the glyph is actually a hand, but it's called deer? Isn't that cool? Four pillars include healthy boundaries. The rules of the spiritual leadership game. And here, let me give you a fourth. Empathic equilibrium. So All right, two, three, four, five. Now we come back through the heart chakra and we go up into the right mind and we project ourselves into the best possible future that we can envision. Tone five of sunrise. 
So here are three high vibration phrases for that energy. Core purpose of creation. Initiating inquiry. You could also say inquiring about initiations. And the vital order of unconditional trust. Imagine having that as your future vision guide. The vital order of unconditional trust. Oh, that feels so good. All right. So everyone has a core self and four guides and one other influencing factor easiest to see on the grid form. They were born on this glyph here and we slide over to tone 10 which is right there and the fifth factor, I should say sixth, your core self, four guides, which is actually ten things because it's your glyph and tone in each of those positions, the eleventh factor is the tone one that happened before you were born. Let me do this for you again, okay? They're right here, and you slide over to this day. That's the day they were born, and then you go up, 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 tone one. Oh, what was that? Go back over. Oh, look at here. This is the seed. That's today, actually, and that's why I'm wearing yellow. Today is tone 11. I like to put that dot below there. You can put it right here. That's cool. You can put it up here. That's cool, too. But I put it below because we are rocking and rolling on the roller bola. It's much more high energy that way, my friends. Much more true to the energy of all tone 11 resolving seed days. You can also call it resolving star seed because it is. <laughs> now... All tone one days are called initiating for obvious reasons. So just like we had uh, high vibration phrases in each of the four guide positions, the tone one being initiating and the glyph of the seed is what I call the wave flow teacher. Now sometimes you are tone one. If you're born on a tone one, you are the wave flow teacher for the following 12 days and they all share your energy. So these people on tone 10 share some of that message of initiating seed. You can also say initiating star seeds because it is. happen to be the only one in the world right now who includes the word starseed in the Mayan calendar. Uh, but let's move on. I think there's more people starting to pick it up. Anyway, here's a little phrase I threw together in preparation for this video. It's more like a sentence, okay? So bear with me. I have to read it. Oh yes. Here it is. Setting intentions for networking with star seeds who are anchoring self-love and leading the perpetuation of unity in diversity. Listen to that again. Setting intentions for networking with star seeds who are anchoring self love and leading the perpetuation of unity in diversity. <laughs> so, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Jung? 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 Carl Jung? I think it's Jung. Esther Hicks. And Tony Shearer. 
that was part of their energy in their incarnation and is still Esther's energy in this incarnation. And anyone else out there who is either a tone one of the seed or anyone born in that 13 day wave flow, you have some of that energy in you, my dear. One more time. Setting intentions for networking with star seeds who are anchoring self-love and leading the perpetuation of unity in diversity. All right. So that's all I have for you today, my dear. I just have to say one more thing. I love you with all of my heart. I'm completely in love with you. I love you so much. I love you so much. Because I am another you and we are consciousness. Namaste.